What's up, Canes fans? Peter Ariz here from canesinsight.com. And coming up next is a full recording of our live show at Titanic with Canes Connection athletes Cam Ward, Elijah Alston, and Ruben Bain. This is not our normal podcast. It was our first live event, first live show after the spring game. Again, in conjunction with Canes Connection, you can sign up with promo code CIS for 20% off your first month. But it was just a great event. It was a little different. We had to bring the energy. So you're going to hear in the beginning, D and I are kind of yelling a little bit because it was there in person. But we wanted to give you the full uncut version of the show so you guys see what you're missing out there at these Canes Connection events. We will also be posting each of the interviews separately for your viewing and listening pleasure. So make sure to check out all of that coming up next here on, again, the live replay from our show at Titanic. But first, a message from our friends at Anjar and Levine. What's up, everybody? This is D-Money with the Canes Insight Daily Podcast. Want to tell you about our good friends at Anajar and Levine Accident Attorneys. If you've been in a crash, someone you care about has been in a crash, you may be entitled to significant compensation. Don't go with a rookie. Go with somebody who knows the process, who has experts at every single stage of the process, who will treat you like family, who will make sure that you're protected, taken care of. Don't have to worry about anything except for getting the finest legal care and having your case handled by the absolute best. Take back control of your life. 1-800-747-FREE, 1-800-747-3733. Also want to talk about my friends at Caneswear. You can go to the store at Davey, Football Heaven, or Caneswear.com if you're not local. Get the absolute best in Miami Hurricanes gear, Miami Dolphins gear, Inter-Miami, Florida Panthers, Miami Heat, Miami Marlins. You name it, they have it. Absolute best when it comes to Miami sports fans, merchandise, and the best staff in the business. Ask anybody, they'll tell you. But if you're not lucky enough to go to the store, go to caneswear.com. Everything is available there, the spot where Miami fans shop. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the fifth quarter here at Titanic. Let's go. Hey, what's up? Thank you, everybody. Do we enjoy the spring game? Was that a good spring game? What do you think, Nick? What do you think? Good spring game? Hey, I want to start by thanking everybody in this room right here. I go around and talk to Canes fans everywhere, and they always say we should be recruiting this player. We should get this guy from the portal. We should be doing this and that. And then when it's time to actually do something, they don't do anything. They're all talk. The people in this room are part of the solution, and I want to thank you guys for doing your part. So when that sixth championship comes in and you're watching it on TV, you're going to know you had a part in what happened in that game because you stepped up and you didn't wait for other people to step up. You guys did it. So thank you, everybody, who is a Canes Connection member. Appreciate you. Give yourselves a round of applause here. Let's go. All right, so great spring game. Nobody got hurt. We got to see Cam Ward. Do you guys like Cam Ward? You guys say Cam Ward. All right, so, which, what do you think? What? Hell yeah. It's a big difference when you have a big-time quarterback that you can trust to get out of the pocket, to make plays, to be accurate, and to do the things that Cam Ward did today. And what he did today, he's been doing all camp, nonstop. It's been consistent, and he has been doing it every single, every single practice. Restrepo, you saw Restrepo to Cam Ward. They said Restrepo was only getting passes because his roommate was the quarterback. I think you're seeing now why Restrepo gets so many passes. The guy is an unbelievable player, one of the best players in the conference, and he has that chemistry with Cam Ward already. We saw the tight ends. I know the tight ends. People have been talking about the tight ends, not getting enough catches. We saw today Elijah Arroyo, number eight. You saw what he can do when he's healthy. He is a big-time athlete. Also saw number 88, Riley Williams and saw what he can bring to the table as an athlete. So a lot of good things from the scrimmage. Pete, what do you think? I mean, look, Cam Ward has to be the story tonight. 300 plus yards, three touchdowns, no interceptions. He's one everyone wanted to see today. And you have to understand 
guys were missing at the wide receiver position. We did not see Jacoby George today, but I think Isaiah Horton, he's a guy we all have to be very excited about at that position, that big body. He gives you something different with his frame and his speed downfield. We saw it last year against Texas A&M in, 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 in that flash and that big play that he had. But he's a guy that I think is putting it all together this year at that wide receiver position, D. I'm very excited about his potential on the outside there. Yeah, and look, to me, the backup quarterback, we're going to see what happens there. I know there's going to be a lot of opinions on the backup quarterback. There always is. We know who has the four string. Look, I don't know who the four string is. I don't know who the four string is. We'll see. I think they all had some moments, right? You saw Reese Poffenbarger have a beautiful pass to, to Riley Williams. You saw Jakari make some nice passes. Beautiful pass to Nike Carr. Had a touchdown to Jackson Carver, the, the freshman tight end. So we saw some flashes from the backups, but not the consistency, obviously, that you saw with Cam Ward. It's a good problem to have, though, D. When, when was the last time we saw a quarterback room with this many guys who you could at least feel comfortable going out there and taking snaps, right, if it came to it? Yeah, and look, they'll be with the first-team offensive line, which was a fortress. Cam Ward had all day to throw at times. You saw him do a little bit of the Mahomes with the, with the shovel passes. So you saw different things from Cam Ward. And I think the first team offense, when they went through the defense like a knife through butter on that first drive, something different than when we first got here. Remember that spring game when uh, Mario first got here? We could barely move anything. It was ugly with TVD and the receivers. That, that, that it, The Gaddis offense that first spring, night and day from what you saw on the first drive today. D, we're going to need you to talk a little closer into the mic here. We got a, we got a good crowd here today. And remember, we're going to be joined by some Canes Connection athletes today. That's why we have the open chair over here. So stick around. We have some big guests lined up. Excited to get them here and, you know, get them with you guys, some of the best supporters of this program, again, here with the Canes Connection. And by the way, you know, the reason we're doing Canes Connection, among other things, is to acquire talent for the University of Miami, make sure they're taken care of. And look, it's 656. There may be some good news at 7 o'clock. For those of you who have your phones, there may be some good news at 7. So we'll see if we have an announcement in four minutes. D, defensively, what stood out to you, not only today, but all spring, right? We've heard so much about the offense, the quarterbacks, and that's great. But defensively, under Coach Guidry last year, I know we were very excited about the strides that that unit took. But what did you see today and from spring as a whole that has you excited about that side of the football? I thought some of the young players, you saw Bobby Pruitt, Camp Pruitt, number 22, running right with Elijah Royal down the field. That was nice to see. You saw Cole McConaughey, number 44, starting, right? You didn't expect to see him starting, the true freshman from Mobile, Alabama. Um, you saw Wesley Besaint, I thought, had an outstanding day, a linebacker, some big hits there. So some young talent at, de at on defense. The defensive backs had trouble at times staying with Miami's receivers. That could be something that you see in the portal season. Some additions to that room based on, you know, some of the things we saw throughout spring and today. There could, there's talent there, but there needs, more, there needs to be more help there. Tight end room, another big topic of discussion after last season. I think this year... A lot of guys are ready to take that next step. Elijah Arroyo, of course, is healthy. Riley Williams now coming to his second season, another year of maturation. And I just, we, all, we understand what, what, uh, what uh, Elijah has to bring as well. So Elijah Lofton. So that room as a whole, have to be very excited about the talent in there. Yeah, you saw Elijah Lofton running the ball today. The first two weeks of spring, he was making one-handed catches. He was getting open on routes. He was just as good as a receiver as he was a running back. So you saw some of the versatility today at the running back spot, but there's more meat on the bone with Elijah Lofton. You're going to see him do a lot of different things this, uh, this fall. So again, we're going to be joined here by some Canes Connection athletes here in the next uh, few minutes. Excited to get them over here and, you know, ask them about their spring journey. D, for you, recruiting-wise, we're talking about Kane's connection, obviously, and, and Portal as well. Units to look at to potentially add some pieces in the Portal. In the Portal, I would be looking at, number one, running back. You saw that the running back depth was a little thin today. I would expect to see a starting running back pursued in the Portal. I think wide receiver, you could see as many as two names join the team at the wide receiver position. 
uh, defensive tackle, defensive end, linebacker, maybe a KJ Cloy type that is a veteran backup who can also start if you need to, and then two defensive backs. And I think in the defensive backs, you're looking at guys who could play man coverage. That's what you're looking at at the defensive back position. And in terms of recruiting, I think Miami is going to try to add offensive weapons, and we got potentially a commitment coming here in about one minute. So, so we might see some a new I'm tracking cane. it. I'm tracking it. I'm. I'm we that's might what see I'm, a that's new cane uh, in about one minute. Scouring the web for right here. Two join, two join the Miami Hurricanes and Canes connection. So we'll see where that comes. D, we look across college football today, and I think having the spring game on campus today was an awesome thing for recruiting and for the community here. I mean, what do you think about getting over there and, and getting on campus here? It's awesome. We get to go to Titanic, an institution. This place is bumping, as those of you watching on TV can hear. We got tons of people here, everybody having fun. The recruits were there. I saw Solomon Thomas. The guy was absolutely enormous. There were some big boys on campus, some NFL legends, Hall of Famers. You can't get any bigger than what we had on campus. So a lot of fun. And best part, we come right to Titanic and have some great student athletes join us on the show, which we'll be doing soon. But, Pete, I think we might have, a, I think we might have some news here. So get ready. Let's see. I'm waiting for the Twitter. And it has just broken. Miami has landed a commitment. Tight end Brock Shot out of Indiana has committed to Miami. Let's give it a Brock Shot. Love it, baby. Energy is picking up. Listen, Brock Shot, I talked to somebody about him this morning. 458 verified 40. That's a verified official time. Six three and a half, two 220. They think can get to 250. A lot of comparisons to Brock Bowers, the uh, the tight end from Georgia. Similar size, similar speed, similar versatility. That's a comparison that's been made by other college coaches and by Miami. Brock Bowers, if you like number 19 on Georgia, you're going to love Brock Shot, the tight end from Indiana. Again, a verified 458. That's not a fake 458. That's a laser time at 222 pounds, 6'4", committed to Miami. And look. Miami landed uh, Luca Gilbert from Ohio, landed Brock Schott from Indiana. They're after Nathaniel Marshall, a five-star defensive tackle from Chicago. He's here on campus right now. Mario is invading the Midwest and getting those guys in this nice weather and getting some size, getting some talent, and getting some tough players like Brock Schott, who, by the way, could have played linebacker for Notre Dame if that's what they needed him to do. So this is an awesome commit, and – Really, it's not the end of tight end. You could see Elias Williams, the number one tight end in the country. He's still going to get recruited. Miami's not going to stop recruiting him. So Miami is going big at tight end. Last year's production at tight end is not the norm. They are trying to improve that room tremendously, as you saw today on, on the field with Elijah Royo catching passes, Riley William catching passes, and it's only going to continue as you add more talent into that room. Second year in a row, the Canes have landed a commitment after the spring game. D, so keeping the keeping it going there. Hopefully, make it three years in a row next year. Yeah, absolutely. And look, six composite four stars in this class already. Last year started a little slower. They picked up down the stretch. Miami is coming out of the gates with big time blue chip commitments, and that's not going to be the last one. I promise you, it'll keep on rolling. D, as we keep things uh, moving here. Receiver-wise, we talked about that group a little bit. I mentioned Isaiah Horton is someone I'm very excited about. Those young guys, Nike Carr, JoJo Trader in particular, freshmen who came in and stole the show from what we understand in spring practice. Nike Carr with a nice reception today as well. Talk a little bit about those guys and what you expect to see from them this season. What you saw today, they make plays every single practice. It's not a, it's not a flash. It's consistent playmaking. Nikar made plays today. JoJo Trader made plays today. And really, that's what recruiting is about. That's why you are recruiting these elite players, because they come in ready to play, and they're able to make plays consistently. It's not a flash here or there. That's what Kane's Connection is all about. That's why if you're watching this on the stream, 20% off your first month. Use promo code CIS. Sign up for Kane's Connection. If you like having great athletes, great character guys who make plays in the spring game, like a JoJo Trader, like a Nike Car, you take a Nike Car from Georgia, that's not easy. 
that takes a major effort, not only from the staff, but from everybody in this room and from the whole organization to land a night car. Beautiful catch down the field from Jakari Brown. He's been doing it all, all spring. I wanted to talk a little bit about some of the other newcomers from the portal D. There's been so much discussion about Cam Ward, but you look at that defensive side of the ball, you bring in a bunch of guys who have played a lot of college football at a high level. Elijah Alston, Mish Powell from Washington, CJ Clark, Marley Cook. So what have that group of players, Brent, I might be forgetting some off the top of my head, but those group of guys, Outside of Cam Ward, again, we're talking about Cam Ward a lot, but a lot of guys who have played valuable snaps at a high level at the, at the college level. Yeah, I mean, you get proven players and you get what you, what, you, what you invest in, right? You invest the time, you invest the resources, get a Cam Ward, that's what you get. It's not, a, it's not a lottery ticket, right? And I think Miami is going to be looking at impact players like that in this next portal season that you know can get it done. And by the way, I think we're going to be speaking to uh, to a Canes Connection athlete pretty soon. Yeah, I think I think we're going to be joined here by our first Canes Connection athlete of the night here. So he's making his rounds. Let him make but his rounds. Well, be- Thank you. All right, so we're going to be joined now by Elijah Alston. Elijah, what's going on, man? Welcome to uh, Titanic. We didn't need you to speak into the mic a little bit, speak up, because we got a a big crowd here. But excited to have you on the show right now, man. And wrapping up spring, man, talking about your transition from Marshall to Miami. Mm -hmm. But let's talk about your spring a little bit and coming together with the guys, the locker room, all that. How was that first few months here down in Coral Gables? Uh, I'd say my, my first few days out here, like first couple of weeks, it was it was a fast-paced transition. I got here kind of late in January, so it was, it was a little bit too much going on, just trying to get like adapted. But other than that, like um, getting settled in wasn't that bad. It was just a, getting used to the early morning schedule. You know, at Marshall, we didn't really have an early morning schedule. We did everything in the middle of the day. So getting used to doing everything in the morning was a it's kind of like a, a reset. I had to relearn it, but once you get used to it, you get used to it. Yeah, you don't do anything in the middle of the day out here. You, you learn that pretty quick, right? No, nah, the only thing you probably got in the middle of the day is class. That's it. Listen, I feel like it's signing day right now. I want to give you a UM hat or something to put on right here, you know? But, uh, but listen, obviously, I've talked to people around the program. They're really excited about what you bring to the table as a pass rusher. But beyond that, what I've heard about you and – CJ Clark, Marley Cook, is that you guys are bringing in a lot of maturity and a lot of work ethic, and you know you know it's go time. So talk about that attitude of, hey, you're not coming here for, for the palm trees and all that, but you're coming to work. It's a business trip. We're not here for palm trees. We're trying to win championships. And what is it about Miami that made you say, all right, this is a spot where I can you know, help my career, win championships, and do what I need to do as a professional? It's, it's always going to be about the U. But other than just being about the U, I want, always want to come down here, come to Florida, come play ball. You know, I reconnect with my, my past D coordinator at Marshall, Lance Guidry. So having him for two years, coming back to kick it with him, run his defense again and execute at a higher at a higher level on a higher platform. So it's going to be fun this year. I want to ask you about Coach Guidry. Obviously, he's a guy that has coached you before, so you had to have some sort of level of trust there with him. What was it about him, his coaching style, that made you say, look, I've already been underneath him. I know it's going to work when, when I get with him again. His, his passion, the way he coached, how he is, he's always fired up. He's always on 10. He's always on go. How, how he is as a person on and off the field, that's, that's the part that carries over the most, how he cares for his kids off the field as well. It, it plays a part. So obviously it's not all football. You know, you, most of the time you're not on the football field, right? So what are some of the things that you've been doing here in Miami to enjoy yourself and to, and to relax? I know you're working hard. You know what I mean? Other than, other than working out and being at practice, I like to lay down, sit in the house. Oh, I got you. Now, we saw you. The well, first thing I saw from you was that tweet that came out where you were getting an INT, taking it to the house. You look like a corner. So, I mean, in terms of this defense, what are some of the different things that an athlete like you that's not just a one-dimensional player can bring? Other than pass rushing, I can play out in space. I can do a little bit of coverage. I'm here to perfect my game just a little bit more any pass rushers you watch at the next level or all time that just kind of you try to take certain things from their game 
Khalil Mack and Von Miller. Those are my top two right there. I like the way they play. Now, Coach Cristobal is known for being very intense. You know, I mean, he's a serious, serious dude. What's that relationship been like when he started recruiting you to now? Uh, Recruitment-wise, we, we sat down, we talked – one on one, he's a he, he seems like a good man. He he actually cares outside of football. He actually cares for for the kids. You know, he want to build a relationship. He want to hang out a little bit. Well, you know what I'm saying? Get to know me. One on one, everything is about trust. You gotta build. You gotta build trust. You gotta build relationships with people. I want to ask you about that defensive line group as a whole, right? You have some vets there. You got some young guys. But talk to me about how excited you are with that rotation because. It seems like there's some depth there where you can throw a whole bunch of different bodies and you guys aren't really going to get tired. It's, it's talent all across the board, inside, outside, every – you name it, it's talent all over the board. You got me, you got CJ, you got Marley, you got Bane, uh, Mesador. Every, 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 we can go down the list of the whole depth chart in the room. It's talent all over the depth chart. It's always there. Now, when you're getting ready for a game – I know you got the headphones on. What music do you like to listen to to get pumped up for the games? Uh, it, it really depends on my, my, my mood in the moment. Sometimes I listen to rap music, you know, upbeat stuff, or sometimes I just mellow out. I listen to gospel music, you know. It just, it just depends. But I, I probably, like, start off, like, getting to the field, the locker room, I'm mellowed out. I listen to either R&B or I listen to gospel. Or I get there and I read scriptures, you know, get on the Bible, get read scriptures. And I get there, and then once I'm on the field, like, a little bit before the game, after like pregame and all of that, I'll probably turn myself a little bit with rap music, you know. Elijah, who are some of the guys on the defensive side of the ball that maybe you weren't familiar with before you came to Miami? And now that you've been out there at practice with them, you see them flying around and like they, they've got something to Run it back. So the guys that you maybe weren't familiar with on the defense before you came to Miami that have impressed you kind of in your time here so far? Um, we got it. It's so many names like the DBs, the linebacker room, uh, Wes. I like Wes. Wes cool. Daryl Porter. I like him. Um, Jay Rich. I like Jay Rich. Um, we got um, Jaden Harris on the back end at the top. You know, we got we got all got we got guys all over the place. And I, I feel like coming here and interacting with everybody in the room in the locker room, like it's nothing but good vibes. It's it's good. Everybody's good. Everybody you know show love. I I, I like the room. In terms of Miami right now, they're no for offensive line, right? Chris Ball's an offensive line coach. You want to get some good players in the MAC. There's good players there, but what you're seeing now every day in practice, what do you what do you see from Miami's offensive line and tackles that's allowing you to get better as a player? Constant competition. It's constant competition. It's, it's not going to do nothing but make me better. I'm going to help them get better. In terms of some of the individuals, I know Jalen Rivers. You got against him. What can you talk about his game and how you attack him? Jalen Rivers, he – that boy different. He different. I ain't gonna lie. His like his punch. Once he grab you, if you don't if you don't get them hands before he get to, you, you're not going nowhere. That's all I'm gonna say. You're not going nowhere. So in terms of your game, obviously you're already a, a player. You already made plays. You're already established. But to take it to the next level, what are you working on? I know you're working on everything, but what are you really focused on? That like this is something that I'm really trying to hone in on and, and take my game to that next level. Keying on to details, being disciplined. Uh, most important is having fun and enjoying the time that you have with the people around you. Uh, you can't take this for granted. No, you know what I'm saying? There's people out here who, who wish they could be in a position I'm in, wish to, wish to be here and, and play every day, do the things that we do. Just, just that enjoy it for what it is. It's a blessing. Elijah, we asked you about Coach Gidry already, but we have to ask you about Coach Jason Taylor, right? And obviously his pedigree having played and being a Hall of Famer, what's it like being able to work with him? I mean, you, you can't say you get to work with a Hall of Famer every day like that, right? I mean. Yeah. Uh, I like JT. JT cool. I like the way he coaches a little bit and the way his – he he thinks just like a player. So, you know, he, he didn't play the game on every level. But if we've been honest, if you sit down with JT, he thinks just like the players do. He he understands that. So it's like that's a it's a different coaching aspect when a, when a coach actually understands how the players are. Now, listen, now you work like a professional, but really you're a student on top of all that. Mm -hmm. So what are some of the things now that you've been here in Miami for a little bit in the classroom that there's either class is interesting or or something that you've enjoyed about the university itself? Uh, I got this one history class that I'm in. I, I enjoy it a lot. Um, it's an African-American history class. So that's I feel like that's probably the best class I got right now. 
probably the most lackadaisical class I got is I got a, a yoga class on like Tuesdays and Thursdays. But it's it it's 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 good. Like it it come in clutch when it needs to come in clutch. Tom Brady, right? That yeah. guy's not the most gifted guy in the world, but he played the longest. So that stretching and all that, you know, it helps. It plays his part. So you, personal goals. We'll talk about team goals, but your personal goals for this season, what are they? Uh, I want to be All-American. That's my goal this year. I want to be All-American. I want to be all first, first team conference, you know. I want to at least go for 10 plus sacks, you know, get like two, two picks, maybe a pick six, two pick six. You know, I want another pick six. I love that feeling. Uh, get a, a good amount of TFLs. You know, I just want to be an all around player. I want to be able to capitalize in every situation I'm blessed to have. Let me ask you on that. Seeing how fast you are on that on that pick six. Are you the fastest the end? Do you guys ever talk about who's the fastest the end? Or? The fastest the end in the room is Marquise Lightfoot. That boy, that boy too fast. They too fast. Listen, talking about the freshman Marquise Lightfoot. He said he's put some weight on already since he's been here. Yeah. And he, he, talk about some of those young pass rushers, man. Who who stands out other than him? We got we got Marquise Lightfoot. We got um Cole McConney. Now them two right there. I like them two kids. They they got real potential. They can be something. Listen, you're out there today. I don't know if you saw because obviously you were focused on you know what everybody was doing, but you had Andre Johnson. Devin Hester, I know you, they, they spoke to the team, right? They, they, they spoke last night to us at the dinner. What was their message to you? We got we got business to do. You know, they they wrote, they they made a path for us to walk on. They started it. They want us to finish it. They want us to keep it going. They built a legacy for us. You know, at the U, it's a standard at the U that you have to maintain. You got to keep going. This year, we have a lot of players. We got a lot of talent. This is the year where we can elevate and do what we got to do to continue to keep the stride of what they started. And what does that mean to you when you go to this, a school like Miami and it's not just, you know, good players who come, it's some of the best players in the history. And now you are one of the guys that they're watching on TV, right? What does that mean to you? It means a lot. It's a blessing to be here in a on a team full of guys who, you know what I'm saying, are, are notified as or notarized as top players. You know, that's, that's a blessing to me because now I'm also – notarized as another good player in the room. So if we got talent everywhere, it's more than just talent now. It's time to execute. Yeah, there we go. Now, listen, I know you do a lot of cardio in with, with the coaches and strength and conditioning coaches, but you're doing cardio chasing number one around, right? Going against Cam Ward and with his mobility and what he can do, what's that like for you as a pass rusher? Just got to get him. It's fun. It, it teaches me how to move a little bit better, get there. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it teaches me a lot of how to how to chase a quarterback and in a very mobile way. Like Cam, Cam will run sideways, Cam run forward, backwards, Cam run the circles if he can. Like Cam, Cam is always going to be somewhere. If you can get Cam in a pocket and you can get him to where he can't move, then you're good. But Having a slippery QB is the best way to, to train yourself to get two quarterbacks. Elijah Olsen, man. I mean, I, I, do we got anything else? To, any any questions uh, from the uh, from the crowd for Elijah? If we don't have anything, then hey, uh, we'll wrap it up oh, here. Yeah, what question oh. here? That's my boy. It's my boy. It's, it's nothing but good things about him. I can speak nothing but good things. I love him. Of course he can play. We had a, we had a question for the, from the crowd, for those who can't uh, hear about Marshall running back Rasheen Ali, who's going to the draft. Uh, a, a, draft uh, a draft fan had a question about him, one of his former teammates there. Listen, Elijah, thank you for coming. Appreciate you. Stay healthy and... Day. We had no signing day. This is a signing day right here. Welcome, man. Appreciate you. Elijah Olsen, great talking to him today. Uh, one of the Listen, you, these are the types of, of athletes that we're supporting here at the Canes Connection. More than just football players, great, great guys on and off the field. So thank you once again to Elijah Olsen. Yep. Which, by the way, let's take some questions. Hey, Nick, I know you got some questions. I got some questions here. We got a question here. Francis Malanoi was not playing today, but he'll, he'll be all right. He's been out for spring, but he'll be fine. Yeah, he'll be fine. And 
that's a deep room. You got six guys that can really go, and they're trying to build up more depth behind that. So even with Francis out, you saw they had all day to throw. But, yeah, Francis was out today. Um, he was out all spring, as was his brother. But nothing to be alarmed about from what I understand. Yeah. I think uh, we'll be getting another Canes Connection athlete here in just a moment. D, what would you think about, about that? I, I'm very excited about Elijah Olsen. We talked about him right before you, uh, you know, right before he came on. We were just talking about him, actually. So, Yeah, I mean, he's got speed. He's got, he's got motor. He knows how to get to the passer. He was pro football focused, top rated passer in the or pass rusher in the portal. So it's not like he's a projection. He's been proven. And now you bring him into a different environment, going against better players and allow his game to step up. I think he could have an outstanding season. People at Miami think he's a 10 sack plus guy if, if things go well. I'm, yeah, I'm very excited about him. And I think he's a guy who has a, you know, a future at the next level for sure. So one thing I noticed today, and he kind of touched on it, was the young players. You saw Cole McConathy starting the game, number 44, at base end. You saw Marquise Lightfoot get a sack. These young rushers are really making an impact early. Yeah, I'm very excited about that group. And, you know, we understand how they've been recruiting at that position. Got some reinforcements coming now in the interior uh, when when we come back for for uh, you know fall camp here. Justin Scott being one of them, very excited about about the the young fella out of Chicago. Um, and look, we got to talk about this commitment again for those who are just coming back in here. Brock shot big commitment uh, just a little bit ago. Another top ten tight end in the country for this uh, Hurricanes team. Yeah, this class right now is further ahead of the way we were last year by a good amount, both in terms of the commitments that are already here and the commitments that are on their way. And I think if this team does what we think it could do on the field, if Kane's connection continues to do its part, which the, the organization certainly will and the people in this room have done, I think it's going to be one of the best classes Miami's ever had. And you look at who Miami beat out for Brock shot, Ohio State, Notre Dame, Florida State, Texas A&M. So these aren't they aren't going just in the Midwest and getting anyone. These are guys who are wanted by the big boys. Absolutely. And by the way, you hear a commotion in the crowd. That's going to be our that's our next guest is causing quite a stir. You guys are going to be excited when you see who we're talking to. But that's why you're hearing a little bit of buzz. It's like a it's like Beatlemania. It's like Elvis is in the building a little bit with the vibes you're picking up here. Maybe bigger than Elvis. It's like I carried away here. It's like I carried away. But listen, uh, some players I want to highlight also. Isaiah Horton, the improvement he's made. I got to the first practice. I saw number two. I did not know who number two was. Isaiah Horton had changed his number, changed his body, looked like a whole different player, and really blew me away with what he could do. And you saw some of that in this spring game. Long touchdown from Cam Ward. Um, also had a nice catch and run. Really showed off his speed and his improvement. He is a emerging, emerging player who's worked on his body and is bearing the fruit of his labor. And he's a guy that we had on the show um, a few weeks ago. Very impressed with his demeanor, his upbringing. He's all business, which is something that you see with most of these guys, man, that we've talked to. They're, they're very serious about this stuff. Obviously, they have their lives off the field, but they are all in on this. And this is the type of character that Coach Cristobal has been recruiting, I think, is is been shown over the past few months here as he continues to build out this locker room and the culture of the locker room. Yeah, look, the players with character and the players with talent are the ones everybody wants. So if you're going to recruit at that level, you better be ready to, to compete with the big boys because guys like Elijah Alston, guys like Cam Ward, guys like Isaiah Horton, everybody wants players like that. Miami's been able to assemble them here at Miami with Coach Cristobal and – Kane's connection is a huge part of what they've been able to do. So please, promo code CIS, sign up today. The people in this room did your part. If you're watching this on the stream, do your part and help this thing keep on rolling because it's only going to get better from here. And I'm just going through some uh, going through some stuff here through Twitter. We're talking about Isaiah Horton. Cam Ward said he's a guy that he expects to have a breakout year, and he says he can trust him, right? So for a quarterback, we talk, to, we talk about the exciting talent at that receiver position, but trusting them is – half the battle and look i'll tell you who has a lot of trust is number seven i mean i would trust him i would throw a baby at him you know what i mean i expect him to catch it i got plenty of trust in number seven and i think every 
<laughs> a real, you know, real baby. And I think every quarterback has a lot of faith in Restrepo. You saw Jakari throw it to him in the bowl game. Certainly saw Van Dyke last year. Cam Ward's no different. Any quarterback that's in the game is going to look for number seven because he is a reliable playmaker. And look, the, all the numbers say that he's returning as a top 10 receiver in the country nationally, right? So how big was that to get him back? I mean, he, he had an opportunity to play at the next level and he decided to come back for another year. By the way, not knowing who the quarterback would be at the time. Yeah, and he got lucky, right? Because he landed a big time guy who, as we saw, the chemistry is there. You know, it's not just two great players. There's a chemistry. I think that's one of the big stories from today is that you saw that connection continue to develop over the course of the game. Long passes, short passes, it's all over. So that's what we're excited about. All right, we got the star of the show here. Joined now by Hurricanes quarterback and Canes connection athlete, Cam Ward. Cam, we're going to need you to bring that mic in as close as possible and project that voice, my man. How are you doing today? Doing good. Appreciate you. So, man, we got to talk about we got to talk about a lot of things. You just got a chance to talk to the media for the first time in Miami a couple of days ago. But we're very grateful to have you here with some of the best supporters of this program here with Kane's connection here at Titanic. Let's go back to your decision. Obviously, you had options. You had options to go to the next level. You had options to go pretty much wherever you wanted. Right. At the end of the day, why was it Miami and how have things been going, man? I mean, take us through these last few months here. Uh, I just think Miami was the perfect fit for me. Um, for my last year of college, I wanted to be somewhere where I was the only piece that was getting added. Um, a lot of schools had a lot to a lot to offer, but I was looking for more of the offensive line standpoint. Over my three year, three full seasons that I played in college, I've been sacked a lot of times. Uh, some sacks were on me, um, some weren't. So you know, I wanted to be protected. And you know, the first thing Coach Dawson and Coach Cristobal showed me was the offensive line. Um, they gave up 11 sacks last year. Once I really watched the tape, they really only gave up six. So, you know, that got me fired up right there. Along the way with the receiving core, they're returning three starters back. Uh, we're going to add guys in the summer. The de- a lot of defensive guys are coming back. Um, Bain, Wesley, Kiko, who I actually got a chance to play with at Wazoo. Uh, so, you know, Miami had a lot to offer, and I felt it was the best decision for sure. Listen, watching you today, there were some times where you had an hour in the pocket. It seemed like just watching it. I mean, has the offensive line lived up to the hype as far as what now you played with them and you've seen them against a good defensive line? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. For sure. Uh, especially Coop. Um, Coop's the vocal point in that offensive line. Um, Jay Rev starting left tackle coming back. Um, plug and play and Zach Carpenter, the Indiana transfer center. Um, so I feel like the offensive lines are re- the least of our worries right now. Uh, I feel like the biggest thing we got to work on going to the summer just continue to come together more as a team. And, you know, that's going to take time getting the new guys in, uh, everybody learning every pers- everybody's personality. Uh, so it's been good. You know, I'm just blessed to be here. We got to ask you about your transition to Miami in terms of like the city, right? You're from Texas originally, played in a completely different part of the country. <laughs> What's it been like being down here in Coral Gables in Miami, especially this time of year where it's usually cold where you're from? Uh, it's been good. I mean, the uh, biggest thing that I want to do making that decision was get closer to home. Uh, having my families fly six hour flights, then drive an hour and a half to get to Pullman, Washington, you know, that's a lot on their bodies. Uh, so, you know, I want to, you know, have them have their input in the decision. But, you know, life's been amazing since I stepped foot on campus from the team. Uh, you know, everyone's been real, real respectful of everybody, no matter where you're scholarship, no matter where you're walk on. You know, everyone respects everyone. And I feel like that's how it should be. So, you know. I feel like just the, the things that we've accomplished so far then our 15 practices are only going to get us better come uh, August 31st. Listen, in your interview I heard you talked about catching mangrove snapper out here. When, 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 listen, you said you wanted to, be, to catch a mahi. When you said that, I got like 10 texts of people like, man, I'll take him on the boat, no problem, man. We'll take a mahi, we'll take marlin, sailfish. So, I mean, wh- tell, tell us about, you know, fishing back home and what do you like about fishing? Uh, so my dad put me on fishing. I've been fishing since I was probably about five years old. In Texas, we don't got the species that it is down here. We really just catch reds, drum. Um, I actually caught a flounder for the first time in, I believe, like eight years uh, before I actually came up here. That might have been some good luck for sure. So, uh, you know, I, I love fishing. I just like sitting out there by the water, even if I don't catch nothing. You know, it's just something to ease my mind, get away from football, um, and really just get off the phone. Yeah, man. Listen, you got mahi, you got sailfish here. I don't know, I don't know if you could do that too in July, 
right before you get to camp, man. You got to you got to take advantage while you're here, man. You're the quarterback. You can't be catching mangrove snapper, man. You got to be getting the big things, man. What's going on? I would do the sale fishing for sure. I got there, the sale fishing. There we go. We'll take care of you. Cam, I wanted to talk a little bit. We talked about the offensive line, which is one of the big reasons you came here. But that receiving core, that tight end core, some of the talent around you. Just talk about some of the guys that stand out and the relationship you build with them. Because there's talent's always important, but that trust we were just talking about. It, we saw you mentioning a guy like Isaiah Horton saying he's the guy who could take that next step. Who are some of the guys right now that you're really excited to work with this season? Um, I'll probably say the first one is Elijah Royal. Uh, he'll be the starting tight end for us. Uh, he didn't make a lot of plays today, but the whole spring he's been killing. Um, whether it's one-on-one -on -one matches versus a linebacker, uh, he's beat the corner a couple times on, on go balls. Uh, so I'm really excited to see where he's going to end up you know, this fall because he's going to be a big factor in what we do offensively. And then also Elijah Lofton, the freshman, came in one hands, two hands. I mean – he, I describe him as a Debo Sammy for us. Uh, you've seen him tone that ball a little bit today. Um, a lot of people don't want to tackle him. Uh, and I feel like us, we're going to have a balanced attack, especially once we get Mark Fletcher back uh, coming off injury. So, you know, I feel like just what we're going to do offensively is just it's going to be hard for defense to stop just because, you know, we can throw the ball efficient. We can run the ball efficient. You know, we can do that. It's going to be a hard team to beat. Man, if we recruit another tight end named Elijah, we got to offer him right away, man, because we're getting some good luck there. But listen, as far as uh, – Guys you could trust, certainly looked like you could trust number seven out there today, Xavier Restrepo. Talk about that connection, and, you know, he threw the ball pretty good. You think he's trying to come for your job there? How do you rate his arm yeah, strength yeah, and his quarterback I, ability? We got, a, we got a little thing going in the quarterback room. If you throw a good ball, we call it a seed. So I told him after he threw, it really should have been a P.I. Uh, I told him after he threw, it was a seed. Uh, you know, they kind of knew we was running. Coach Dawson going down the sideline, he's talking about seven. Is your arm ready? And then the whole defense heard it, so they knew the play was coming. Um, but, you know, Strep, Strep is going to be that guy for us this year. Uh, I plan on him having the same season, if not better, than what he did last year. You know, the plays that he makes and one-on-one -on -one coverage, um, the way he can turn his body and move versus zone, it's elite. Um, you know, I got a chance to play with a lot of good slot receivers throughout my college career, but I think he's the best one. Cam, we got a question that has nothing to do with football. We've been wanting to ask this to you for a while, but when you were on your visit, there was a, a picture that went pretty viral. You ran into a famous uh, musician from Miami, Rick Ross. Just talk about that, meeting him, and was that kind of like, man, Miami's a little bit different than uh, Pullman, right? Yeah, it's a lot different than Pullman. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was good, though, for sure. Oh. You know, just coming out of there, because that was the first time I got to uh, to meet uh, Rohan Marley. It was the first time I met him. Um, so, you know, I didn't even play, know he played football here at U. So I'm still watching all the U documentary stuff right now. I'm getting caught up. You got to give me some time, though. I'm getting caught up. But, you know, meeting him, uh, it was good, though, because, you know, I listened to a lot of his music. Uh, um, not, not like the, not the new stuff, but the old stuff. I like the old Rick Ross. But, you know, him getting a chance to meet him, I got a chance to talk to him. Outside of uh, Prime 112, I have a number. So, you know, he's a good dude to know. Um, but, you know, the stuff that he's done for this city, the stuff that, uh, you know, he's going to do for our football team, supporting us, being there at Hard Rock, you know, with the fans. So, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Listen, you are not a guy that – was five stars since you were a baby, you know, as far as the ratings, you're not someone who's been training, you know, you've seen those guys, right? You see them on social media and they're the, they're known as the guy the whole time. You were out there playing basketball and doing other sports and doing all those kind of things. How much do you think playing basketball, competing, being underrated has made you the quarterback that you are today, whereas some of those other guys sort of faded away after the hype died down? Um, I think it's, I think it's one of the reasons why I am here. Uh, just cause I carry that with me every day. Um, every time I step on the field, you don't know when it's going to be your last. Every time I step on the field, I feel like I'm the baddest one out there. Um, and so, you know, when I when I get a chance to lace up those cleats, uh, I know it's only 100 people who I care about. And that's the guys on our sideline, uh, you know, and, you know, the fans and the family and my family in the stands. So, you know, every time I get on get on the field, I don't I don't take it for granted. You know, I always I always praise God. You know, I'm keep doing that, you know, and hopefully one day I'll get to where I want to be. And let me just follow up on that playing basketball, right? Some people, they train year round, you know, they're not competing. They're not playing games. They're just training to be a quarterback. You were playing basketball from what I understand. You were a nasty point guard. How much do you think that has helped you right now as a big time quarterback? That helped me a lot. Um, I think that's the reason why I can move like I can in the pocket, just put him out. So at different body angles, different positions, um, and I also played baseball growing up. I was a shortstop and pitcher. Uh, so that's why I get a little bit of my side arm. 
But you know, I think I think today a lot of a lot of kids don't play multiple sports. So I think they end up hurting them in the long run because your body's not used to making different different movements. But then when you finally hone in on one sport, you have every tool in your toolbox. I mean, I know you've been compared to this guy. I can't help but do it. Another Texas quarterback who played baseball, played middle infield, played basketball, was underrated. And that's Patrick Mahomes. You know, you were doing a little bit of these shovel passes today and doing a little bit of the razzle dazzle. So has he been an influence on your game? For sure, for sure. Um, he, he's one of my top quarterbacks. I love watching him and Aaron Rodgers are really the main two quarterbacks I watch um, just because they bring they both bring a different skill set. Pat, you know, he's known for all the playmaking, all the outside the pocket stuff, which is good. But the, the way I've seen him progress since he got from college to the league just went in the pocket. And I think Aaron Rodgers, just the footwork he has, the aura he plays with, how he flicks the ball, um, you know, it goes it goes up match. And that's why those two are going to – Aaron Rodgers, he's one of the best quarterbacks and Pat's going to end up being one of the best quarterbacks. Cam, you obviously face the defense every day in practice. Just talk a little bit about that side of the football and how you think that group is coming together. Uh, that group is going to be the reason why we win a lot of games. Uh, you know, the battles that we go through day in and day out of practice, whether it's the ones, twos, or threes, everybody gets good work in. Um, and, you know, the scrimmages really tell it all because we have a lot of periods in practice where it be scripted. But once we go call it, that's the real football. And, you know, you see those guys running to the ball. And it's not it's not one play where you don't just see one person. Every play, 11 people running. And I think we added the right guys, like Mish Powell coming from Washington. I got a chance to play against him twice. He's a great player. Bain, we already know what Bain's about. Um, so I think, I think we have the perfect fit um, for offense and defense, the way we play on offense and the way they, uh, you know, the way they can light you up under pressure, the way they know how to disguise blitzes. Uh, so I think they do a great job on the defense side. I know you met with some legends this weekend as far as Hall of Famers, you know, Devin Hester, right? Andre Johnson, I think Michael Irvin spoke to you guys too, right? You not only being a hurricane, but being kind of the guy with a lot of responsibility on this team. How does that hit you when you know that all these legends are watching you on Saturdays and, and putting a lot you know, of faith in you to, to bring this – um, it's good. It's good. I mean, you know, who wanted, who wouldn't want to be in this position right here? You know, if you'd have told myself if I coming out of high school, been a zero star recruit, uh, end up playing power five quarterback, I'd have told you it'd be it's true. Uh, if you said been in Miami, I don't know if I would have told you that. Um, but you know, it's a it's a blessing though to you know have guys like that who want to pour into you, who want to pour into the football team. Because uh, at the end of the day, we all trying to win. Y'all want to see us win, and we want to win. And you know, that's what we plan on doing this year for sure. We'll get you out of here real quick. One question I wanted to ask you, though, for sure. I talked to the coaches, and I talked about your game when you were getting recruited by them. And the first thing they told me wasn't your arm, your athleticism, anything. They said IQ, off the field and on the field. So in terms of off the field, how important is it, the academic side and being a, a complete person to you and not just being you know, a football player? Uh, it's a big thing. Um, I was blessed to get a degree. Uh, from Washington State, uh, working on the Masters here. But, you know, it's good because everything ties into being a quarterback. Um, and I think being a being a quarterback, you have to, whether it's lead, leading by example, leading vocally, depending on what type of person you are, you got to do it a different type of way. It's all how the team is going to respect you at the end of the day. So, you know, I feel like I have my own unique style of, you know, getting guys to play together, getting team camaraderie. Uh, and, you know, at the end of the day, it's all about God. You know, he's going to bless you. You know, you keep blessing him. You keep praying. The blessings going to come. Cam Ward, man. Do you have anything else, D? No, just thank you, man. Appreciate you. Appreciate you joining us and hope you have a great season, man. I know a lot of people really, really excited to have you here in Miami, man. So thank yes, you. Sir. Appreciate it. Cam Ward, man. Awesome talking to him right now as we got the crowd getting fired up here at Titanic. Slide, man, again. You want to be part of this? Kane's Connection, 20% off first month, promo code CIS. Sign up today. Be a part of this. Be a part of that six ring. Be a part of helping elite athletes, student athletes like this. Kane's Connection, be part of the solution, please. We have a couple more Kane's Connection athletes that will be joining us here momentarily. I think they're back there already mingling with uh, with the Canes Connections fans, but that was awesome, D, getting a chance to talk to Cam right now. We've heard so much about him. We know about his talent. We saw it today on display. He talked to the media for the first time the other day, but it was great to get to sit down with him right now. 
yeah, it was the whole it was the whole experience, right? Because you you saw him play, and then you saw what he brings to the football team, and then sitting with him, you really see the person and what he brings to the locker room, right? I mean, you could just tell this is somebody who's a genuine dude, who's a focused guy, and I mean, look, there's a reason why there's so much excitement in that building. And I think he's a big reason why. And what's the first thing he mentioned about why he wanted to come to Miami? The offensive line. Yeah, you saw it today, man. I mean, that first drive, it, he had a lot of time. And when he has time, it's over. He's, he's going to be surgical with it. So great talking to Cam right there. And I think uh, we have our next Canes Connection athlete working his way over here momentarily. Another guy who... Had an incredible start to his career, D, as we're going to be joined here in a second by Ruben Bain. Yeah, we're not messing around here at Kane's Connection. This is, again, amazing event. Be a part of this. The energy is crazy. You hear the crowd. You see some of these star players here. 20% off, promo code CIS. Why are you waiting? Sign up. Be part of this. We need it, man. We need it. This energy is huge. This is the sixth ring. This, the sixth ring starts right here with the guys in this room. And I think uh, he's making his way over here right now as we are going to be joined by Miami Hurricanes defensive lineman Ruben Bain. Ruben, thank you so much for joining us today with Kane's connection here right after the spring game. I mean, what a season last year, right? I mean, you got to come back this year and do it all over again, right? Yes, sir. Uh, well, I want to start off by saying thank you for having me. But, um, like you said, starting all over again, uh, that's the process of football, though. Every year you do something, the next year you come up and forget about last year and keep working. Um, that's something I've been preaching through my whole life, something Coach Taylor been preaching often. And I just forget everything that happened last year don't matter. Now it's time for a new path. I'm back on my old number trying to work. You know, I thought you were going to play today, and then I saw number four come in. I felt bad for the offense. I'm like, man, we're trying to run some plays here. Why are we bringing you in? You know, we got to run the offense. But uh, and right away you made a couple pressures. So – some people say, hey, Ruben, put him, in, put him in glass. You know, don't even use him in spring. But I've seen you out there working. I've seen you working separately with Jason Taylor and Harrison Hunt and a couple guys. What was your goal this spring as far as getting better? Um, this, my goal really was to lose a little, a couple pounds. But other than that, um, just get, go every day in the practice and work. Most people, they have a little success early on. They want to get lots of days going and get complacent. But um, I have much bigger goals, so to, I'm always going to work. I'm always going to work no matter if it's practice or the game. I'm never going to take no plays off. I'm never going to feel like, oh, I shouldn't practice today. Every day I wake up, it's a day to get better, and I always take that. I'll never take it for granted. Ruben, it's been a year plus, obviously, since you made your decision to come to University of Miami. You could have gone anywhere in the country. But after you've been here now for a year plus, get your family to come into the games and obviously your brother on staff, your decision, I mean, how right was it in your mind after after this last year, and, and why was it that you decided to stay home? Um, my decision was the best decision I ever made, like I always say. Um, I couldn't get this stuff like this anywhere else. I mean, the support I get from my family, my friends, the uh, community, the city, it's just it's second to none. Um, everything I do is exactly made in day, stayed in day. Everything I do is to wake up and be better and to get uh, the program back the way it need to be. Let me ask you, you know, you should have been a five-star. We all know you should have been a five-star, right? We know that. But now, you, you're rated, right? It's not, you're not, I mean, people know you're the man. So how does that, there you go. So how does, how do you keep that motivation that you had that drove you to be what you were as a freshman now that people expect you to be that top guy? Um... Like I said, every day I wake up is a day to get better. I'm always thinking, how can I improve my game? How can I improve myself? I never take never take a, a day off, never take a playoff. I mean, I'm always working. And really, it's just my motivation, my why's. I mean, I got my family here. They're the main reason. I'm always trying to get better every day. Ruben, we saw the video when you won ACC Freshman of the Year, right, with, with Coach Cristobal. And it's, it meant a lot to, obviously, you, but to him also, right? Talk about the relationship with him, because obviously he, he made you a priority. And he said from the beginning you were going to be a cornerstone for getting this place back to where it needs to be. So talk a little about Coach Cristobal and, again, trusting him with your decision to come to Miami. Um, I mean, I put all my trust into Coach Cristobal. 
he's not only a great uh, coach, but a great person. Uh, he pushes me every day, and he always has my back no matter what. Um, it's never been a – I never had a shadow of a doubt on my mind of the plan he had for me. I always been coming in knowing that whatever he says I'm going to do because I trust him and I give him my all every day. No matter um, – no matter what it is, I'm going to do it. If he tell me to run through a wall, I'm going to go run through a wall because I believe that he got a reason for me doing it. Um, Coach Crystal Ball, he's been putting his trust in me since day one. Like you said, he always mentioned it. And now since I'm here, I guess it's just showing off. And all the work that we put in is, is, is coming to the light. Let me take it back to high school a little bit. You know, when I was coming up, it was always Northwestern kind of number one and Central was number two there. That's changed quite a bit the last decade. Yeah, so – what led Central to be such a dynasty before you, now that you're there, and then now since you've left? Um, really, it's the culture. I mean, I used to go to Central practices when I was a kid when my little brother was on the team with Dalvin Cook and all them. And I'm just in the weight room watching them, how they work out, how they grind, and, and just looking up to all the older dudes. And I feel like that's something I was just built over the years. And as it kept going, it just kept trickling on. And once they turned the corner finally in that 2010 run, it just never stopped. And um, just the, the culture that I've been input in the system, it's a standard. Everybody lives up to the standard. No matter if you're a, a quarterback, a kicker, even the water girls, they all uphold to the standard. So it's just it's just a way of life on 95th. Let me ask you about your brother because he knows this because I, I remember watching your brother in high school and I wanted Miami to recruit him because I thought the guy was super athletic and super good. Obviously had, a, had an injury that kept him from really maybe being everything he could be just because of the injury and, and bad luck. Seeing something like that as his younger brother, what does that do to your motivation as far as, you know, hey, man, this, could have, this, this is not promised to, to be able to continue all the time? Oh, uh, man, it boosts me every day, honestly. Um, just being that little brother that I always wanted to be around my big brother, I mean, I was always in his shadow. Um, he went through some tough times, but we all stood together as a family. And always watching him, everything he did, I wanted to do. I wanted to emulate. And just, I mean, I'm lost of worries right now. That's my big brother. I love him. Anything he do, I want to do, even to, to this day. Who's winning the rep, man? When he when he was playing and you now, who's winning that rep? I got it a thousand percent. I'm going to tell him every time I got it. That's me. He was an athletic dude. I don't, know, I don't know the power that you have might be a little tough for him. That's, yeah. that's, my, that's my breakdown on yeah, that yeah. one. But listen, so... You on the field, you're playing defensive end. A lot of people talk about you with defensive tackle. You got some good edge rushers that can play next to you. What's different playing inside as opposed to playing outside for you and how you adjust your game? Um, it's, uh, everything happens a little quicker. Um, it's a high percentage of getting doubled and chipped and stuff like that, getting some slides coming your way. Um, you just got to play a little more hungry inside. You got to have a little different dog to you. Um, but like, I, I'm willing to play all four positions if I have to. Anything that has the valuable to – anything that has value to me, I'm all for it. I'm, I'm not going to shy away from anything or any kind of work. I'm always going to go towards it. And with that chance, I mean, anywhere they put me, I know I'm going to do the job. I'm going to get the job done. Ruben, talk about that defensive line group a little bit. Obviously, there were some injuries there last year. You were seeing double and triple teams, right, by the middle of the season, it seemed like. Now that that group's fully healthy – how excited are you to work with that with that group of guys in there? And talk about some of the some of the other guys that you're excited to play with. Oh man, I'm so excited for this upcoming year. It's, it's crazy. Uh, we all finally back. Um, everybody's back healthy. We strong. We we bonded together. We've been here like going on two years now. Uh, just the 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 chemistry we got in the room. I mean, if anybody's texting in the chat, hey, I'm gonna go watch some film. You got almost the whole D line pulling up to watch film just because we so bonded and. Um, just, I mean, I'm excited to see what's going to happen this year because if we that close off the field, I can imagine what's going to happen on the field. You know, we just had Cam Ward on. And I was talking about sort of the, the pressure of, you know, getting this thing back from, from former Canes and everything else. You got it twice as much because you're from here. So you got uncles, friends, you know, people around really putting that pressure on. So what's that like for you as someone who's really kind of the face of the program to have the whole community looking at you and, and you know, giving their opinion and all that? Um, I mean, at times it can be tough if you think about it, but I try not to. Um, the wise words of my head coach, Coach Jules Joseph, he always told me that pressure make diamonds, so I'm never shying away from the pressure. I know. <laughs> I know the, um, 
I know that from the pressure, it's going to make me a better person, better football player, but also a better young man. Um, and really, I just put my head down to work. I uh, stay close with my brothers, my team, and we all stay, we all sticking where we got together. We talked to Elijah a little while ago, Alston, and something he said was those battles with the offensive line in practice, right? And we know that that group should be really, really strong this year. What's it like going up against those guys in practice every day? It's great. I mean, shoot, just last week, we was doing one-on-ones, and I got pancaked twice back-to-back by Samson. So, I mean, anybody could get it, really. Uh, everybody's talented on both sides of the ball. So we going at it every day. I mean, that last Saturday prize, we throwing blows. We fighting. We cussing at each other. I mean, tensions get real high, but that's what's needed. Coach Chris always says iron shop is iron. So when we on green tree, we going all at it. Ain't nobody holding nothing back. We know that at the end of the day, we're getting each other better. And once we get in the locker room, we kiki kin, we dance with each other, we loving up on each other. It's a brotherhood. Let, there it is. Let me ask you. So I know you've had some great coaches, but I'm sure a lot of your lessons started at home. So talk to me about your family and what they instilled in you and allowed you to be sitting here where you're where you're at. I mean, sure. I got a huge family, uh, like a real huge family. Um, but really just at home, being around my family all, all the time is, is just they I was just showing resiliency. No matter what it is, stay together and push through. I always believe in God, put God first. And he'll guide you the right way. But um, just the chemistry I got at home, I knew how to take it to other people, help other people, and always, always look out for each other. That's what helped me at home, and I just translate that into the real world, and everything helps out of my favor, God willing. So the central pipeline to Miami is starting to get built a little bit now, obviously. Armando Blunt coming in as the young guy. Talk about his development and how you're trying to kind of take him under your wing a little bit and show him the ropes. Um, well, Mondo, he's a little banged up right now, coming in from high school. And uh, really, everything I do, I try to bring him with me. I mean, he's a young guy. Everybody knows he graduated early. Um, and he's just, I, I, I say he's like a little sponge. Everybody around the facility say he's my little brother and stuff like that. But um, I just try to, anything I do, I try to take him with me and tag him along. Because I, I told him just the other day, I mean, if you if you, if you serious, you could be the, make history to be the youngest freshman All-American ever. I mean, you just turned 17, so if you do that now, you just stick to the program and work. You're gonna you're gonna make history, and I'm just trying to I'm trying to open up his eyes so you can see that. Listen, we talked a lot of football, talked a lot of business. You know, I know you got most of your time is off the field, right? Not in practice, not in the workouts. So, what do you like to do off the field? What are some of your passions off the football field? Uh, actually, a lot of people don't know this about me, but um, I major in photography. I've been doing it for about the last seven years. Um, it's something that I'm really interested in, but in my free time, if I'm not doing nothing, just sitting around my dorm, I draw. Uh, I'm real like artistic guy. That's any sort of photography, nature, I mean, any anything that you kind of look for in particular? Uh, before, it was just typical sports, but I took some couple classes when I first got here in the spring, and I kind of see myself falling into like the landscape area with the nature. Everything like that. And we need some help over here, man. So if you ever, you know, need to snap, <laughs> want to snap some pictures. I got you. I got you. Here. I got you. Hey, listen, Ruben, appreciate your time, man. I know everybody here is really grateful that you chose Miami. And it's not just the player. It's what you represent. If you're going to build something for, to be sustainable, it's going to be people like you, man. So appreciate you. Thank, Thank you. All. you. Thank you. Thank you. Ruben Bain, thank you, man. So I believe we're going to have one more Canes Connection athlete here. No, All right, so that's uh, that's it, man. I mean, we had... So, listen, guys, you signed up for Canes Connection. You had Elijah Alston. You had Cam Ward, Ruben Bain answering questions for you guys. I mean, I don't think you can get any better than what you had right here for what you're doing. And listen, thank you so much for supporting. You see the character. You see these kids, how good kids they are and how talented they are. You see it on film, man. Support Kane's connection. This, this needs to be a sustainable thing. These kids work too hard. They need your support. Appreciate you. Thank you, everybody in this room, for coming. And thank you for supporting these student athletes. Appreciate you. Go Canes. Go Canes.